So I think this is uh, one of the mo most exciting demos I've, I've, I've done in a while. Uh, I'm super excited about this sort of feature capabilities here. And I tried to do this in under 15 minutes anyways, and I uh, I just felt for sneaking in some new features as well do, uh, in the demo this morning. So, but anyway, so the PMP quick start is based on GitHub code spaces. And the whole idea with GitHub code space is essentially you get the virtual machine in the cloud and you can do everything in your sort of browser and where you get started. First of all, you need to sign up for code spaces is currently in preview. So just go to github.com slash code spaces and sign up for that. And hopefully you get in the preview. Yeah. Then once you've done that, you just go to ak.ms slash PMP teams quick start. And that will take us take you to this GitHub repo. It's very a simple GitHub repo. It contains a README file, uh, essentially what I'm going to do in the demo, walk you through how to scaffold the Teams application using this uh, code space and also the definition of the Docker file because it's a, it's a container running in, in the cloud and everything. So it's in there. And to get started, all you need to do is to click on the green button here called Code, uh, open with code spaces, and then if you already have a connected code space to this repo, you can choose that one or create a new one, which I will do right now. This will take a few minutes. So uh, while we do that, let's prepare something else for our demo. Now go over to my demo tenant and I'll just create an Azure AD application because we're gonna build a, a tab with SSO support. I'll do this very fast, but uh, you've seen us do this uh, multiple times previously. It's all in documentation. So let's call PNP demo. 765, click register. A couple of things I want to highlight in here, the, the mostly uh, uh, standard things I'm doing. Uh, I need to copy the application ID because I will need that later. So I just post it here in my notepad on the side. I will need to create, uh, create a secret here because we need that for the demo that you typically don't do that when you just create an SSO tab, but let's create a, a secret because we will do on behalf of Flow here to get single sign-on support to uh, call into the Microsoft Graph with some new exciting features in just a bit. Uh, the second, uh, third thing I need to do here is expose an API. I just click set and click save here because when we're using code spaces, we will get an, a dynamic URL and I will update that as soon as I have that URL. So I just click set here and uh, so I can come back and edit this one later. Uh, then I need to add a scope, access as user, uh, as user. And this is all standard, it's exactly what you do. Uh, and according to the instructions, of course, you should put better uh, descriptions in here, but you just need to add that. Uh, I need to add the two client applications that we need for an SSO tab. There's two GUIDs you need to know, uh, or copy paste, which I prefer. There's too many GUIDs in my head, so I copy paste. And let's do that. Uh, and do that. So the one is for the desktop and mobile application and one is for the web application for Teams. So let's take the second here as well. Copy paste. I know it's boring to see copy paste, but the, the virtual machine and Docker file, etc. is spinning up in the background. So I'll, I'll take the time to do this. So now, now it's all set here, except the app ID URI, which I'll take in a bit. Then I need to assign some permissions to this one, and we do the default permissions that we need for an SSO tab. It's delegated permissions. It's email, offline access, open ID, and profile. So let's choose them. And for the second part of the demo, we will need the presence as well. So we'll add that one. Presence read, add permissions. And to make everything simpler, I grant admin consent directly now, so we don't have to do that later. So essentially, my app is up and running already and hopefully if we switch back over to my code space now the code space is actually set up and in the browser i have vs code and as you can see as well let me zoom in a bit it's actually installing all my extensions that i have in my local in my setup synchronized with github as well so every all settings that i have all my extensions preferences configurations are actually getting in here as you can see the icons are being updated because i have that plugin I have the terminal window here and let's create the directory where, where we let's uh, store the demo file, demo PMP, uh, PMP demo. So we know where it is and I call it 765 perhaps. I go down into that directory and as you can see, uh, it's already created here and let's just type yo teams. 
So this is the cool part of this. So this Docker container that we actually have running in the cloud here, there's no local installs. So I can actually do this on, on an iPad or, or any, any browser, essentially. Uh, so it's already pre-installed your teams and, and the required utilities for that. And I will just click through everything here. And the only thing we will configure is that we want to use a tab here. We want a tab. We can skip the URL that will be dynamically generated for us. Uh, no indicator. We give it a name. It's configurable in a team. And yes, I want to do Azure AD SSO support for this tab. Uh, the app ID, I can copy paste it in here, but I'll show you a faster way to copy paste those kind of things. Just click through here. So my project is now scaffolded and it's installing all the NPM packages. We can see that in the, uh, you can see all the files in here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of cheating here uh, to save, save a couple of minutes. So I go into the .env file and the bottom, since I didn't enter the, the app ID, uh, app ID and app ID URI in the wizard, I can do it in here instead. So I just copy paste the application ID that I put in my notepad, put it in here and replace that one. And let's also replace th this one. And finally, I add the tab app secret here. You typically don't need that if you just do an SSO tab, but the, uh, for the second part of the demo, we need the secret as well. And I copy paste that secret that I have here, see, like that. So the cheating part I'm going to do is that uh, this domain name will be uh, dynamically generated for us when we start uh, essentially serving the application from this code space. And it will actually look like this. I can copy the URL in the browser here and paste in here like that. And then I need to change GitHub to GitHub preview. And I also need to uh, uh, append sort of the, 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 the specific port that I'm exposing through this application. Since this application is running locally in the machine on port 3007, which is defined up here, I need to append that one. So once done, I'll save that file. And I'm actually going to do turn off autosave here. That's a good tip for you as well. If you're uh, by default in code spaces, autosave is set to on, but that's su super annoying if you're working with files and you, you forget to import something, you don't do linting and all those kind of things. So I, I prefer to save manually, so I just toggle that one. Now we're almost ready to go. We need to install two more packages for the second part of the demo. So I go npm install. And first of all, I'm gonna install the Microsoft slash Teams FX, which is a new JavaScript library for the, used by the Teams toolkit to, to provide a better single sign-on experience and get access to the graph client in non-SharePoint framework solutions, such we're doing in here where we host it ourselves. But also a server-side component to do that exchange of token from the uh, SSO token we get from, from the JavaScript client to uh, an, a proper access token that I can access graph. And that's a new package called, uh, sorry, Teams Simple Auth, and it's just currently in preview. So I need to save that. So that's all we need to do. But before we go further, we need to copy this one up here, as I said, come on, select. Well, there it is. I need to go over to my uh, app registration and update that URI in here. Because if I don't do this, the, we will get single sign on errors. So now I actually get this dynamic URL generated specifically for my code space in here. If you create new, if you reuse the application, this is typically the only thing you need to, to, to change in your Azure AD application. So let's go back to code spaces and we're ready to run this application. And for, to do that, we type gulp code spaces serve. I run in debug mode, no linting, but I also append the flag called publish here. That means it would automatically publish my Teams application to the Teams App Store. And as you can see here, it's generating the manifest, uh, sipping, the, sipping it together, but then it, then it wants to uh, log into my tenant. So you can see to sign in, use the web browser and use this code. So I'll jump over to my dev tenant, go to akms slash device login, paste in the code, and as you can see here, this is the PMP management shell. So we're using the M365 uh, CLI in the background to actually uh, upload the application to the Teams App Store. And if we go back to the browser, you can now see it's uploaded application to the Teams App Store. 
and you start to build the application, uh, the client side and the server side. This will take a couple of seconds, and once the server is up and running, which will happen at any moment right now, we need to do a small configuration. You will see on the right-hand side here, your application is running on port 3007 and it's available. By default, all ports are private. That means that you need to sign into them. Uh, but in order for Teams apps to work, the, the page has to be publicly accessible. So port 3007 here, I right click on that one and make public. And we're all set and we should be able to go into Microsoft Teams, go to the App Store, I need to reload it. Uh, since I just published my app, I, sometimes I need to reload it twice due to some caching. Uh, so let's see here, my org, PND, PNP demo, that was not the right one. We need to reload once again. As I said, this is a little bit annoying, but that's yeah due to caching performance. But you typically only need to publish once unless you change something in the manifest. There it is, PNP demo 765. Click on that one, add to a team, BMP, set up tab, and we should have our tab soon loading. Hopefully everything is working, so you can see it's loading here right now. It's just grabbing the JavaScript files, and something is very slow. Let's go over here, see what happened. Terminal, it Download the config, the, 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 it should be working. Why not? Let's try again. PMP demo 765. There it is, so, so now it's working. Demo gods uh, had some fun with me. And as you can see, the SSO tab work, it, it puts my name in here, and that means it's actually properly signed in without uh, any pop-ups or anything having uh, me, so you got my name in here. So that's cool, right? That's fairly standard. But assume that we want to show the presence in here. How can we do that? And we can't do that with the normal uh, Azure uh, uh, AD token that we get uh, from Teams single sign-on. That's why I added those two extra, extra uh, packages. So the first thing is that we need to add a server-side implementation of this. And that's essentially a simple express router. So I'm just importing this uh, uh, simple auth router from the, the Teams simple auth package. I need to configure that one, so I'm not going to write all this code, but essentially it's you copy paste the same code over and over again, and I just add it somewhere in here, for instance. So I'm adding a new router, so an, a post to auth slash token will go to the simple auth router, and I configure it here with the different uh, uh, .env variables that I configured previously, presence.read and my tenant ID. We can click save. And that will actually uh, recompile the backend for us. And let's go over to the, that doesn't do anything to the tab that we just saw. So if you go over to our client side and to the um, uh, React component that for the tab, let's first add our present in here as the state, presence set press, presence equals use state of type string, it's spelled correct as well. And we set unknown as a default. So that means that we have a state here for presence. And we want to show that. So we in down here when it says hello, uh, Victor, normally we say you are. And let's put presence in, presence in here. So we'll actually type out that when we have that. But how do we get that then? Since I said we can't uh, call directly into the graph, we don't have the graph client or anything in here. And uh, what we do that is with the help of that uh, Microsoft Teams FX component. So I'm just going to do an import like that. And then I'm going to copy paste uh, some more here. And that's the same kind of thing here. You copy the paste the same thing over and over. It's in their readme documentation how to do that. But essentially, it's a couple of lines. First of all, I, uh, we load the configuration for my uh, backend, the simple auth, the backend endpoint. Uh, with the tab up ID, the URI, the tenant ID, uh, and the endpoint, essentially the, the web server we get this from. Based on that configuration, I can create a Teams user credential, and uh, it's just creating uh, like this. Then I can get the Microsoft Graph client by using teamsfx.create Microsoft Graph client, passing in the credential, and then presence.read, all the scopes that I want, 
And finally, I get the graph client and can call that exactly how I'm used to do uh, in uh, in any kind of JavaScript application. I need to add async here as well. So once we've done that, and we can press Control S to save, it will take 15, 20 seconds to uh, get started. So the, the reason I think these code spaces are really cool, I can talk about that while we're rebuilding here, is that I can make these applications super fast and hopefully within 15 minutes as we do here, essentially have something up and running, test that and validate that. And then once I'm done, I can just throw this one away and start over again. Uh, if you want to keep it, of course, you should fork uh, the repo that we had and, and then uh, commit your changes. But typically what I've done over the uh, the last few weeks is using this for all kind of testing and 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 don't have all that those uh, node modules uh, libraries to remove on my on my machine etc and it's fairly fast as well so let's go over to this one here and let's reload our tab and let's see what happens so i'm available it says here and if i go in here and change my presence to busy and reload again it will actually show that i'm busy so that's super easy. In 50 minutes, we created a new Teams tab, deployed it. We added uh, gra graph capabilities to it. And, and when I'm done like this, I can just go in here, close this browser, go over to Code Spaces, reload, and remove this one. And all my code is gone, and the demo is done. Thank you. Awesome, Victor. Awesome. Thank you for that demo. I think you just set a record for minds blown in a call. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, excellent I job. Was, but I, I needed to add that extra thing in there and, and there with the single sign on. I think this is uh, uh, super useful. And, and as I said, it's been extremely convenient making those one off demos. You want to test something out or install new libraries and you don't want to pollute your whole machine or WSL or whatever you have. Right. So, I think this is perfect for those uh, tests and demos. Absolutely. And I, I don't know if the friends had heard him. He said you could develop Teams applications on an iPad. Yeah, exactly. So it, there you it's go. It's all done in the browser. Uh, you don't have to have any local install or anything here. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Thanks, Victor.